Kevin O'Donnell. Tom Brady's always had the reputation of being a, a quick uh, making decisions and getting the ball out of his hands very fast. I think his goal is like 2.3 seconds, if I've heard that right. Um, how much of an adjustment to, did it take for you, the receivers to, to kind of get used to those quick uh, balls coming out? Uh, no adjustment. All right, next question is going to be from Luke Easterling. Sometimes I think people can not realize the human aspect of this game and this business sometimes. And I just wanted to get your thoughts on maybe how challenging is it to to go through so much and so much of your career and, and have so much production with one quarterback and have a relationship there and then to have to to switch gears and you have a new guy, which obviously you're excited about having Tom. But just how is it is it difficult to manage those kind of emotions and relationships as the business changes? Absolutely. Uh me and James will, will be friends long after we're done playing football. Uh, he's a great guy. Um, you know, we had a, a great connection, and I wish him nothing but the best. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, like you said, it's a business. And, uh, you know, my, it's my job to, to catch the ball no matter who's throwing it. More importantly, how many times have you watched the Harry Potter movies during the quarantine? <laughs> uh, my <laughs> kids love them now, so I watched, I watched them. I kind of feel like a kid again because I watched them so much. We watch one through four. I'm going to wait till they get a little bit older so they can watch the last uh, three movies or four movies. And uh, But we, we enjoyed it. We got a movie theater room in, in our, uh, at my home in Texas. And uh, we enjoy watching all the, the Harry Potters, one through four, almost every single day. Our next question is going to come from Rick Stroud. You know, Brady is known uh, for being meticulous about route running and things like this. I know he's done a lot of coaching with you guys, um, and, and it seems to be going well. But... Have you had any experience where he, you know, he also is driven the way Jordan was driven in those guys? Has he blown up at anybody? As you said, you know, has he gotten emotional yet and, and kind of coached hard? No, nah, he he's like he's like uh, everybody else. I mean, he gets he gets fired up at practice. He's making plays today, making some really good throws. He gets fired up just like everybody else. Um, when it comes to routes, he is very detailed in how he wants us to run certain routes uh, to protect the throw. Um, but other than that, I mean, he's just he's just like everybody else. He's just real excited uh, to be practicing and uh, to be playing some football right now. And next up is Greg Allman. Mike, what for you, when you think about this receiver group, what's the biggest difference in not having the preseason, not having the, the normal ramp up to the season? What do you guys need to do here in the next three weeks to be best prepared for the season starting? Just keep going hard uh, every day, making each other better. Um, I feel preseason, obviously, for starters, uh, you know, guys like myself, it doesn't matter as much because we barely play anyway. But uh, you know, it, it's kind of it's gonna it sucks a little bit because you know the the younger guys, the guys, the undrafted free agents don't get an opportunity to to really showcase what they have in a game setting. But uh, you know, on the back end, we get to carry more practice squad players this year, so hopefully that'll make up for it a little bit. But you know, it sucks not having a preseason this year. But um, you know, we're just happy to play football. Next up is Jen Lane. A number of guys have said that Tom is very particular about the way he wants his routes run. Can you give any specifics about some of the things that he's asked you guys to do on those? It's, it's like every other quarterback around the league. Like, if we're running an outbreaking route, the, the DB can cut it. So we have to shave the route down. Just normal football stuff like that. And he just, he just harps on it a little more than others. That's it. He's just yeah. he's really detailed, and he really wants us to you know, shave those routes and protect the throws. And also, what was it like for you to have a practice like you did today where it seemed like you guys were really clicking on the deep ball? It's like we, we had the, the Berkeley prep uh, practices going, and it felt like one of those. You know, uh, we're very familiar with each other. Uh, he throws a really good ball, and, uh, you know, we made some plays today. All right, next up is Ed and Cena. And, Mike, I was wondering if I could ask you just about this offseason, a very different one, and, and just kind of the, the unity that the players had as a whole this, this offseason in terms of, uh, you know, in, in the wake of the George Floyd situation and Black Lives Matter, and also in terms of, of players being concerned and, and uniting over uh, COVID pro protocols when that was concerned. As a veteran guy, we, we, would you see that kind of stuff? It, it does it feel that the players kind of have have a little bit more of a voice when 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 they're they're united like that? As professional athletes, we have this platform, and you know, a lot of people in the NFL are minorities, so you know, this is the, the best time. Uh, for, for our platforms, like every, everybody's watching. So, you know, the, the team, the teams and the league coming together, it means a lot and it gives a lot of people hope out there. Okay, next up is going to be Scott Reynolds. I wanted to ask you about some of the receivers that you guys added last year at the end when you and, and Chris went down with some injuries. Jonathan Franklin, Cyril Grayson, and Jaden Mickens. What have you seen from those 
three guys as they enter really their first Bucks training camp with you? Man, they're, they're so hungry. They're so hungry right now. They're, they're taking the coaching well. They're just playing so fast. And all the receivers, really the whole team, man, it would just seem like everybody's excited to be back. And, uh, you know, having this opportunity uh, before, I guess guys would take things for granted. But, you know, with the whole COVID situation and the, and the Black Lives Matter and, and everything that's going on in the world, uh, I think we're just happy to be out there. And, and we feel like kids again, really getting the opportunity to play a game. And uh, it's our occupation to do it. So we're just, we're just happy to be out there. And the receivers have been looking great. Specifically, Jonathan Franklin, he's got a different story of having played quarterback in college and really only one year as a wide receiver. Um, how has is, how is his development uh, been in your eyes? Oh, it's coming along great. Today he had some really good routes um, that he ran today versus press man, and uh, it, it looked really good. Uh, last year he was corner. And I, th I think he's a much better receiver than he is corner. Next up is going to be Tom Krasnicki. Hi, Mike. Hope you're doing well. On the subject of corners, talk about the competition and practice against some of the young corners, the Carlton Davises, Jamel Dean, Sean Murphy Bunting. They played really well down the stretch. Coach Aarons was telling us there's a lot of trash talking going on out there. So anything going on between you and the young DB so far in camp? Just a, the, same, the same stuff. You know, I'm going to talk, talk a little bit of smack here and there just to, to make it fun. And they, they, they talk a little bit as well. But at the end of the day, we're just trying to get each other better. And, and they've looked really good, all our corners, um, from the starters to the, to the second, to twos, the threes. Everybody's been looking good, playing hard, like I said. And uh, it's been a fun camp and a highly competitive camp so far. Steve Isbitz. Mike, as a player who hasn't been to the playoffs yet, can you even explain how exciting it was for you to have Tom Brady, Rob Gronkowski, and LaShawn McCoy walk into the Bucs this year? Oh, it's, all, it's awesome. You know, they're, they're superstar players. Um, they've had the best of the best careers at their position that you can really have. And, uh, you know, I, 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 looked up, I look up to those guys, you know, great players that, that do, everything, do everything right, take care of their business off the, off the field. Uh, it's great to have those, those veteran guys on our team, and they've accomplished so much. So hopefully a lot of that can rub off on us and uh, we can get to where they've been. And what did you think about hearing no fans at opening day in New Orleans? I kind of figured uh, that's how it would be. Uh, it's it's going to be different. It's going to take some getting used to, but, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we're, we're going to play, and we're going to play hard whether it's fans or not. It's going to be different, though. It's going to definitely be different. We'll go to Rick Stroud. Hey, Mike, obviously you and Chris had, you know, big years last year, and uh, a lot is expected of you. But, you know, you got a couple other receivers uh, that, like Justin Watson and Scotty Miller, seem to be coming on. Have, have you? How dangerous could you be if those guys get involved with your tight ends, et cetera? Well, like like I like I said before, I mean, we every year it's our goal to have the best wide receiver room in the league. Last year, I thought we definitely had that. This year, we're going to be even better, top to bottom. And Jay Watt, man, he he improves every single year. Like the quickness yeah. at the line of scrimmage, his routes, he's more physical. He's running faster, he catches the ball better. Scotty's improving. You know, all our guys just keep improving uh, year in year out. And, uh, you know, yeah. that's a testament to coaching and just our work ethic. So, you know, this year, hopefully we have a, a great, great year and we could be a catalyst for this team. And next up is General Lane. Mike, you have to develop a very uh, quick chemistry with Tom Brady. Um, what's it been like doing that? You get to know him on a much more personal level than most people do. So, like, what is he like, you know, away from the field that maybe people don't know about? Do you have something you want to share about him that – that maybe people don't know. I'm not about to tell all this man's business, but uh, <laughs> no, I mean, not like that. He's the he's the goat on and off the field. Like it's, mm -hmm. it's crazy, you know. He's a superstar, the most accomplished player in our game in history, and you know he's just like everybody else. He just works extremely hard. He's always taking care of his body. He loves his family. He loves family time, and uh, he's just cool. He's a real down to earth guy. And uh, he's already up there as one of my favorite teammates. And uh, we haven't even, we've only had a few practices together. So uh, that says a lot, man. Uh, I'm learning a lot from him. And uh, hopefully we can tear it up this year. What's it like having that, that sort of relationship already with a living legend? It's cool. He, he's trying to uh, turn me into a living legend as well. So uh, I'm appreciative of that. I have time for a little bit more. We're going to go with Scott Reynolds. Mike, just wanted to ask you about uh, two safeties, uh, Mike Edwards, the third round pick from last year, and Antoine Winfield, which you've seen from the rookie this year. They're, they're making plays. They're making plays. They really are. Mike caught the first pick, uh, what was the first practice? 
Uh, I mean, everybody just keeps improving, and that's that's what we, we, we hope for. You know, obviously it's just practice, but uh, if we can just keep getting better each day, I feel like this team could be really scary on both sides of the ball. You know, our safeties, they've been playing great. I mean, I've, I've been really impressed with uh, Winfield. He can play – he's very versatile, nickel, safety, mm-hmm. be in the box. He can do it all. All right, we're going to have time for one more. We'll go back to Kevin O'Donnell. Hey, Mike, what uh, type of level of play do you expect from not only your team but NFL teams as a whole, you know, not having the offseason that we normally would have or, or the preseason games? Do you think there's going to be a drop-off or the, or the teams are just really going to have to build towards, towards the, as the season go, goes on? Oh, the only thing I was really worried about, Kev, was um, like, the, like the injuries. But the NFL did a great job of, like, giving us a ramp-up period uh, to, to get our bodies in shape. And uh, our team specifically did a really good job of just coming in in shape. You know, I didn't see really many guys huffing and puffing or not, not as many soft tissue injuries. But uh, everybody's going to be amped up and excited because it was uh, you know unknown if we was going to be able to play or not. So I feel like everybody's going to play a little bit harder this year. You know, some stadiums might have fans, some not. But I feel like it's going to be a, a great to watch. And uh, everybody's going to get after it, I think.